What's up everyone, China Cycling here. Now, most of the footage you saw in that intro just was captured in my recent trip to Beijing, but all of the footage was captured on these three cameras. So here we've got the DJI Osmo Action 2, 3 and 4. Now you guys know me, I'm a huge camera nerd, I'm often doing camera videos on the channel. Uh, you know, my job as a cycling YouTuber is to make cycling videos, and I also own a media production company here, so, you know, I love my cameras, especially ones that you can use on or around the bike. You've seen me do lots of videos on cameras before, you know, all of the Feiyu stuff and the Insta360 stuff, uh, but I've actually been a long-time user of DJI. Uh, I've been a user of the original DJI Osmo Pocket since 2017 or 2018, whenever it came out. And uh, you know, I've got a Mavic drone and DJI mics and stuff. So I've been a DJI user for a long time. So when DJI reached out to me and asked me to make a video helping to explain their range, uh, I jumped at the chance. Now, DJI do it a bit differently to the likes of GoPro. So with GoPro, when a new GoPro comes out, it's kind of like the old GoPro is old news and the new GoPro is amazing. It's revolutionary, it's everything, even though maybe they're gonna just tweak the specs a little bit. But so you might think with the DJI's, so I said earlier, we've got the Osmo Action 2, the 3 and the 4. Now you might think that the 3 replaced the 2 and then the 4 replaced the 3, but that's not the case. Uh, these cameras are all a little bit different and they're actually all on sale now. And they've got different strengths and different weaknesses and different price points. So that's basically what I'm going to walk you through today. The differences between them. I tell you the advantages, tell you the disadvantages. Maybe compare them to some of the other cameras out there. And then you guys can make the best decision of which one you want to get. Now obviously this time of year it's the holiday season. I can't really keep up with it. I'll put links in the description below that you guys can go check out what's at what price. Because uh, I'm sure there are some good deals to be had these days. I know for a fact DJI are going to be doing a Black Friday deal. So yeah, these things are going to be on offer. Check out the links in the description. Now, if you want a super rough overview of the range, we'll start with this, the Osmo Action 2. So this is kind of like the small pocket rocket of the bunch. Uh, more of a nimble, can get into more small places, a bit modular. There's two versions of it. So you have the screen up here. Uh, the main camera, I should say, with the screen on the back. Then this bit, there's two different versions. There's one with a screen that can face forwards so that when the camera is facing, you can see what you're shooting. Or there's one that's just has just a battery on the bottom, which gives you extra battery life and stuff. But yeah, I'll talk more about the Action 2 in a minute. Moving on to the Action 3. So this is more of your traditional like GoPro stylish action camera. If we compare it to the GoPro, you can see lots of similarities here. Uh, but it's got a bigger sense than the GoPro. Uh, it can go further underwater than the GoPro. It's cheaper than the GoPro. So yeah, a bunch of advantages in the favor of this one. And then we move on to the latest and greatest, the Action 4. So the Action 3 and the Action 4 are probably the most similar in the lineup, but the Action 4 is just the latest and greatest, you know. This thing has the biggest sensor of all of these cameras. Absolutely huge sensor, but still pumping out 4K. So the advantage of that is that each pixel size is really big, which helps you get better image quality, especially at night. So I'll throw in some comparison shots later on in the video to see, but you'll see this thing at night is basically unbeatable. So that's a very cool camera. Other than that, it can do like 10-bit log color grading. So if you're a camera nerd, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not a camera nerd, you don't have to worry about it. But basically, if you want the best image quality and you're uh, super nerdy into all of that stuff, then obviously the Action 4 is more for you. So now let's go into a bit more detail about the cameras one at a time. So we'll start with the Action 2 and maybe I'll bring the Insta360 GO 3 to the table because these two are kind of like uh, rivals, I'd say, because I'd say the advantage of both of these is that they're small and modular. Uh, so they are uh, they both use like magnetic clamping systems. So you have different ways to mount it around the bike or on your body or on your helmet. Obviously, the, the, the smaller ones, that helps in terms of aerodynamics and stuff if you're mounting them on your body or whatever. So uh, obviously, the GO 3 is the more tiny one and the lighter one if you're really a, an aero, a weight weenie nerd. But because of its small size, it sacrifices in power. So this can only do like 2.7K resolution, whereas the Action 2, this can do 4K resolution and at a full 120 frames per second. That is bananas. Like my Sony camera that I'm filming this on can't even do 4K 120. So this thing in this small of a package is crazy. Now, if you've watched some videos before, you may hear that when you do put in 4K 120, it might overheat. But I think for cyclists, that's not an issue because on the bike, you're always moving forwards. It uh, always gets cooling. I had no issues with overheating. It's November here in Shaman, but it's still like 31, 32 degrees in the day. And I had no issues with overheating when shooting in 4K 120. Uh, but people out there say they do have issues, so it is something to be aware of. But 
4K 120 isn't something you use every day anyway, like 4K 60 or 4K 30 is probably a lot more reasonable. So built-in storage, there's 32 gigabytes in here, but you can put an SD card in here and then kind of like transfer the footage across. So if you're using just this but on its own, you've only got 32 gigs, but if you're using them together, then obviously you have more options in terms of storage. That's a pretty cool feature. And uh, the screen bit at the bottom also has a battery built in itself, and this battery will help to charge this battery when they're together. Uh, just on its own, this unit, I think it's 70 minutes of battery life, and together they get acclaimed 160. I've not tested that, but that's that's what the website says. If you're taking just this bit into water, this bit is waterproof down to 10 meters. Uh, you don't need a case or anything, but you can't bring this bit into the water. So just bear that in mind. The magnetic thing is super satisfying. So I should say that all three of these use the same magnetic system to mount them to the accessories and they all can have this very satisfying clipping magnet feel. So uh, this also has a magnet so you can essentially stack them on top of each other, but Basically you can have a, a magnetic mount on your helmet, a magnetic mount on your chest strap, a magnetic mount on the front of your bike, and you can quickly boom, 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 switch between them, and you don't have to worry about them, uh, you know, falling off, whatever, because once they're on there, they are on tight. So price of this guy will depend what version you get of it, uh, with or without the screen, or with or without the battery, etc. But generally speaking, like for like, I think it's a little bit cheaper than the Insta360, but again, Price is going to be crazy this time of year. I can't keep up with everything. Uh, if I was to say the strengths and weaknesses of both of these, this is more of the powerhouse. You know, the picture quality is better on this because it's got the higher resolution and the higher bit rates and stuff. Uh, whereas the Insta360, one advantage of this is when you pull the camera out of the mount, you can still see what you're recording on the screen. They talk to each other wirelessly. Whereas the Action 2 can't do that. The screen has to be connected for you to see what you're recording. But of course, there is a screen on the back so you can see from that too. But yeah. In general, if you're looking for a small, more compact option, it's going to come down to you. Do you want the better picture quality, like the picture horsepower of this guy, or do you want the more kind of like simplicity and versatility of the Insta360? But uh, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with either, but I was very surprised by this. I didn't know this could do 4K 120 when I got it, and I was, yeah, blown away. So super good image quality from something so small. Now moving on, we'll go for the Action 3. And I guess the closest thing I have to the Action 3 is last generation GoPro Hero 11 Black. So yeah, they both have a screen on the back and a screen on the front. One difference being though, on the Action 3, both of the screens are touch screens, whereas on the GoPro, the front screen is only just to show you the back screen is the only touch screen. So that's the difference there with the screens. Uh, resolution wise, so this does 4K 120 as well. This one can do 5.7K, but when you do pop it up to 5.7K, you start to lose some of the features, like the angle of view, it gets fixed to what you can choose, and the uh, image stabilization also has some, uh, some limitations. So it technically can do 5.3K, but all of the features that it can do are mostly available in 4K, which is the same as the Osmo Action 3. Uh, image quality wise, I think it uh, comes down to a bit of personal preference. So in theory, the Hero 11 Black has a smaller sensor and therefore smaller pixels, so should do worse. Uh, but they do quite a lot of image processing on this guy, which I think does give, the, give it a bit of help with resolving details and stuff. But I'll throw some comparisons on the screen and you guys can be the judge of which image quality you like. Uh, for me, if I'm talking about dynamic range and all this stuff, you know, uh, they both have the uh, they both have really good options. If you really want to get geeky into into it, into it and use the like log modes, again, you can do color grading afterwards and get even more dynamic range out of them. But I know most people aren't going to do that. So in all of these comparisons, it's just all the cameras are on default settings, uh, standard picture profiles. I've done no color editing, so you can basically see like what you'll get if you just take it out of the box and hit record. Because I think that's the fairest way to do these comparisons. As storage-wise, they both come with options for micro SD cards and no built-in storage. They both have removable batteries. Uh, one cool thing about the Action 3 and the Action 4 is they, you can get them with this, a little battery holder. So I've only got one battery in here at the moment, but you can put three batteries in there and charge them over USB-C. But a party trick of this is, as well as being able to charge the batteries, you can use this as a portable battery bank, which is pretty cool, you know. If you're out on the bike and last minute your phone runs out of battery or something, or if you're out on a shoe and you know your microphone runs out of battery, I can use this to charge my microphone. So that's been a really cool feature. And I think that's one thing that DJI are good at, like building in these extra features to some of their products. So uh, yeah, same batteries in the Action 3 and the Action 4. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if you upgrade in the future, are they gonna still work? So yeah, that's cool. Uh, if we talk about waterproofing, so the Action 3 has the edge again. So this, the Hero 11 and the new Hero 12, they're only waterproof down to 10 meters. This is waterproof down to 16 meters. 
If you're going to be doing underwater stuff, that may matter to you. I don't go that far underwater, so for me, it's a bit of a non-issue. So yeah, in general, to summarize these two guys up, there's a few extra features on the Action 3 that you won't find on the GoPro Hero 11, but the GoPro Hero 11 image processing is pretty good, so I think it might come down to personal preference which one of it you like the look of it. Um, but prices are also all going to be all over the place. So this is the Hero 11. This is last year, so I'm sure you can find deals on this. The brand new Hero 12, I'm sure there's going to be less deals. But the Action 3, links down below. I know there's going to be some deals on this. So if you just want something that's super simple, GoPro-ish, but has really good picture quality and a few features that the GoPro doesn't have, I think the Action 3 is a great option. And moving on to the Action 4. Now, when I originally shot this video, I only had the GoPro Hero 11 to compare to, but boom, I now have the latest and greatest GoPro, the Hero 12 Black. So yeah, I originally shot this comparison with the 11 and I didn't think it was quite right to compare the Action 4 to the 11. So now we're comparing uh, the latest and greatest DJI Action with the latest and greatest uh, GoPro Hero Black 12. So it's a fair fight and let's have a look. So with these comparisons, all of these cameras have lots of different settings you can change and stuff, but to keep things fair, I try to keep everything on default as much as I can. So if we jump straight into comparison, so these are both on 4K 24 frames a second mode. Usually all my videos are in 24 frames a second. And if you look, especially uh, at these, like it's really hard to separate the two. Like it almost looks like I've just copied and pasted the same image. Uh, one thing I will say is the greens on the GoPro look greener, like uh, the GoPro seems to really push the greens a lot. Uh, and I, I think I prefer the sky on the action. I think I prefer the sky on the action. There's a lot more dynamic range there in the sky and less blown out by the sun. Also, I think especially at the edge of the images, there's lots, there's a lot less distortion on the Action 4. So all of these cameras, you can change like the, the angle, change how much it gets cropped and whatever. Both of these are in default, which I think for the GoPro is the super view mode. But yeah, you can just see like towards the edge of the frame, especially any straight line just gets really bent out. Whereas on the action, uh, the lines seem a lot more straight, even though they seem to have roughly the same field of view. So uh, yeah, in some angles, it's less noticeable than others. But yeah, some of these on the GoPro, especially some of the straight lines look uh, very wonky. And especially on this shot, you can see with this white barrier here, like it's a straight barrier, but you can see it's kind of doing like an S on the GoPro and a lot less of an S on the uh, action. Now the maximum resolution of the DJI action is 4K, but the GoPro can actually do 5.3K. So to give it a, a run for its money, let's bump the GoPro up to 5.3K. However, with the GoPro, when you bump it up to 5.3K, you do lose some of the features and uh, the stabilization suffers a lot. So if you check out this uh, little comparison here, so the GoPro is shooting on 5.3K, so that's great, we get extra resolution and stuff, but if you look how much the uh, image stabilization suffers, uh, yeah, I don't think it's very usable unless you go for some really like uh, gentle, less action shots. But does it make the image quality any better? Let's have a look. So here's the Action 4 shot at 4K. You guys probably seeing it in 4K. And then have a look at the GoPro shot in 5.3K and then downscale to 4K so it should get sharper. But I think because the because the stabilization is so all over the place that you can't really appreciate the resolution. And this is the helmet on your head, which is like the, you know, the most stable place you can put a camera anyway. Uh, this next test was pretty surprising. So both of these are in the, the default modes. Uh, so this is for a mic test. So both the cameras are on my helmet, exactly the same distance from my mouth, getting exactly the same amount of noise, uh, wind, etc. Uh, so they're all in default settings, which I think for the DJI Action, it's the wind reduction is set to standard by default. And on the GoPro, it's set to auto by default. And uh, yeah, just listen to the difference in uh, wind reduction to both of these. Microphone test, microphone test, one, two, three. Uh, yeah, so pretty crazy difference there. Uh, I guess, you know, the DJI is just doing something more clever with all the mics it's got on or whatever. But yeah, uh, totally night and day difference between those two. Next, we have some slow-mo comparisons. So both these cameras can do 4K 120, which is crazy. Like I said, the camera I'm shooting this on can't even do 4K 120. Uh, and yeah, basically, you know, you can really slow it down and uh, see these birds flying around in super slow motion or whatever. Um, you guys be the judge which one you think looks slightly better. I think, again, these are much of a muchness. Uh, however, one thing is that the DJI, when you knock it down to 1080p, it can go up to 240 frames a second. Now, the GoPro can't do that. 
Uh, so if we look at this comparison here, so the GoPro is running in 120 frames a second, the DJI is running in 240 frames a second, and they're both slowed down to one tenth of real time. And you'll notice the GoPro, it just ends up looking a bit more choppy because you've got less frames to play with. So yeah, when you do go down to 1080p, you get more frames per second on the DJI if you want to do that really, really, really slow motion stuff. And then the last comparison between the two, as we were talking about earlier, the nighttime stuff. So yeah, at nighttime, it's when uh, these action cameras really set themselves apart from each other. And if we go head to head between the DJI Action 4 and the Hero 20 uh, and the Hero 12, so these are both again 4K, 24 frames a second. And you'll see that, yeah, like the GoPro just doesn't have the same exposure when it gets dark. Uh, it's underexposed and I, I think the image stabilization doesn't quite work as well as the Action 4. Uh, but yeah, you guys be the judge. So in perfect situations, I think the Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12 Black, like they're almost indistinguishable from each other. In the side-by-side -side shots, like if you told me it was the same camera, I'd believe you. Uh, but when you start pushing these cameras to the limits, I think that's when the DJI, you can kind of uh, notice the extra horsepower and the bigger sensor and all that stuff that it's got going on. So in everyday use, maybe not much of a difference, uh, which maybe is a compliment for the DJI. But yeah, when you start pushing them to the limits, I think the Action 4 has the edge. But basically, most of the features of the Action 4 are the same as the Action 3. The main difference is the upgraded sensor, and that's gonna give you the better image quality, and especially in the dark. Uh, usually, action cameras are the one thing that, you know, that's like the Achilles heel shots in the dark. But for the Action 4, the low light performance of this is amazing. Again, I'll show up some footage of the low light performance of all of these. And yeah, the Action 4 just like wipes the floor with anything. So again, it's gonna come down to what you wanna use it for and stuff like that. Uh, but the extra picture quality is very good. Now this might be a thing that does or doesn't apply to everyone because for me, I love to shoot in like a log, 10 bit and then color grade it afterwards. But obviously I am not, I mean, I'm a, I know I'm a very small part of the market. Um, if you're like me and you're, de you're a nerd and you really care about all this stuff, then you'll probably already have a conclusion in your mind. But for me, someone who's got to you know, deliver videos to clients, I need that in the Action 4. So I think the Action 4 is probably my favorite of the bunch, but obviously you're paying an ex extra for it. I think usually the retail price on this is about $70 more than the three. And is that $70 worth it for you? Again, I'll show you some comparisons. If you think you can't really see a difference between the two, you're probably just better off getting the Action 3. Uh, if you're gonna be doing lots of color grading, if you want the 10-bit color, then yeah, I'd say the Action 4 for me is worth the extra $70. So now we're gonna do some like head-to-head -head comparisons. I'll show you some comparisons that I shot earlier in the week and you can kind of look for yourself what you think of them. But yeah, in general, I was really surprised by the whole lineup. Uh, I'd say the two was the one that surprised me the most because you know, when you hear that there's a four out, you think the two is gonna be like out of date, but trying it out and seeing the image quality and seeing the compact size, super impressive. Uh, the three also can go toe to toe with the GoPro. That was no surprise to me because I'd seen reviews, I'd seen footage before. The four was really surprising for the low light image performance. That is absolutely crazy. But in general, they've all been really cool cameras to use, like um, taking them to Beijing, like I could put all three in a very small bag and mount them on my helmet, on my bike, on my friend's bikes. And just because they're all magnetic, switching them around really easily, getting different shots and stuff, super, super cool. And like I say, the battery charger was also cool. And the units themselves, the two and the three have fast charging built in. So, you know, if you're just at the airport, if you've got, or if you've got a USB battery bank, you can charge them up really cool. One thing I wish all of these cameras did have, so I use the DJI mics a lot, which are wireless mics that have a receiver unit. I wish the mics could, could talk directly to the camera and didn't have to use a receiver unit. That would make this a game, uh, this, that would make these amazing for me. Like I'd, I'd, I'd almost stop using other cameras and just use this camera if the mics could talk directly to the camera. As it is, they can't. You still have to use a mic adapter which goes on the side and you lose your waterproofing and it gets a bit clunkier and stuff. So 
that's one thing I hope DJI can add in the future, but for now, we don't have it. Another cool feature on the 4 is the GPS remote. I'll throw some shots in here, but basically it's like a watch that you can wear, a couple of buttons on there. It does two things. Number one, it gets a GPS signal, and then it syncs that data to the, to the video file. So on the app later, you can add in all your graphs and stuff. So you can have your speed on there, you can have a map on there, all that stuff there. So that's really cool. And then you can also use the buttons on the watch to start recording and stop recording. So if the, go, if the, if the camera is mounted somewhere where you can't get to it, or you're just feeling lazy, then yeah, you can press single button, start recording, single button, stop recording and it will put the gps data into the video file as well so if you are looking for the four that might be an accessory that's worth getting too but yeah i, I hope this video has cleared it up a bit like i said in the last video that i did about the Feiyu, the options for shooting video now on the bike is getting more and more and more me as a camera nerd uh, i love it because more choices is good but i imagine as a, as a consumer people are like well what do i buy uh, i never want to say what you should buy because you there's like you know thousands of people watching this video i don't know who you are so i tried to talk to the cameras tell you their strengths and weaknesses and let you guys choose uh, if you don't want to leave a comment if you want to tell me your particular situation like what kind of shooting you do or you have any questions for me i'll answer those questions too uh, but yeah, in general, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these cameras. They've been super reliable, the image quality is great, uh, and the prices are reasonable too. Speaking of prices, like I say, it's that crazy time of year, so I don't want to talk about prices too much, but links in the description below, They're probably changing every day, I don't know, but uh, go check out the links and you'll have the latest information. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of camera reviews about cycling, then do subscribe because I do lots of this stuff. I have some more camera reviews on the way as well. And yeah, just keep recording your rides. Uh, I think it's a great way to live through the ride and share it with your mates and stuff. All of these cameras now, that's one thing they've really got dialed down is uh, sending the files to your phone, quick editing on the phone, and then sharing with, uh, with the world. The DJI Mimo app does it really well. So yeah, definitely check that out. Okay. I'll catch you next time. China Cycling out.